Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So something different to the normal output today. I've done one of these before, uh, well a couple of reaction videos and specifically I've done one reaction to Jeremy Fragrance before and I'm, I'm finding that I find these reaction videos fun. Guys, don't forget I've got a discount code for you, Smelly10 gets you 10% off at executiveshaving.co.uk. Great fragrances and shaving products which ship to the EU and the UK. Some really great affordable fragrances there. Also, you might want to check out my brand, Norton & Wilson Gravitas Pour Homme has been getting more and more rave reviews. There's a link in the description for this fantastic aromatic fougere fragrance, which I really hope uh, many of you will get to try before too long. Uh, but a quick word first, because I'm sure some people in the comments will say, why, why are you so obsessed with Jeremy Fragrance? Why do you make videos about him? Uh, all this, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, either they'll be saying I really love him and I'm obsessed with him in that way, or they'll be saying I'm sort of maybe I'm making fun of him or being negative. Well, I want to be very clear. I find Jeremy Fragrance really, really entertaining. I like him. I like his on-screen persona. I believe that is a character that he's playing, and he's probably a, a talented method actor. I actually think. I mean, there's a bit of him in there, his real self. He's not his real name, Jeremy Fragrance. Uh, but I think that the, this is an exaggerated caricature of, of that person he wants to be. He knows what he's doing. Um, I've really always liked his channel. It's been going many years. He's, he's evolved. I mean, great YouTube channels always evolve and change. And his has completely done that over the years. I, I really kind of can't describe to you how different it is now to some of the videos which are now deleted from the, the early days, uh, which were more sort of conventional fragrance reviews. But now, basically what's happened now, he's over in Miami. And he's, I mean, he's in his element. He is loving it. I think during the pandemic situation, it looked like he was kind of trapped in Germany, couldn't really travel very easily. Um, for a man who's always jet-setting back and forth, particularly to the States and back to, to Germany, that must have been very, very frustrating for him. Uh, but you can now see he is absolutely over the moon to be out there. At the moment, he's in Miami, not sure where his journey will take him in the States. And he's been doing a couple of videos by the beach. Uh, and he's very scantily clad. So we're gonna have a look at a bit of two videos, actually. There's two videos uh, and in both of them. I'm, you know, he's almost kind of uh, in decent exposure levels. Uh, I, I just love it. Uh, very, very fascinating, interesting stuff. I find it amusing and entertaining. I know it's not a serious fragrance review uh, and all that kind of thing, but you know, I wanna be clear. I am pro Jeremy, I enjoy his channel, and anything I say maybe taking the mickey is, it's all in fun, I like him. He, he's a really, really good guy. And uh, it's a great, great YouTube channel because you see the video and you think, what's he going to do next? And there's nothing better than that, I think. So let, let's have a look at the first one, which uh, we'll just check out the outfit or lack of outfit here, guys. Here we go. Hey, guys, Jeremy Fragrance here in Miami in a white Speedo. Power baby. Whoa. And there are some attractive women I would like to ask you. Could I ask you for a YouTube video about a fragrance? I'm a famous YouTuber from Germany. I would like... <laughs> Imagine, how would you feel if this guy, he's standing there in his underpants. I guess, I guess it's kind of, you could say they're swimming trunks, but they look more like underpants. I guess he's by the beach, so I guess you can get away with it. Uh, he's got this backpack on, uh, which I think is because he needs it for the mic. There's nowhere else to clip it. Or, well, maybe one place. Uh, but he could, he could have clipped it to his necklace. Anyway, um, what would you do if you were these two women? I mean, it's, it's, it's a very strange thing. He's got so much confidence. Uh, this guy. I mean, you've got to hand that to him. I, I, I certainly wouldn't stand there in, in the, the underpants, and I certainly would find it really difficult to just say, oh, there's some nice ladies. How are you doing? So, yeah, re remarkable beginning to the video. Let's see what happens next. To ask you for an opinion right here, for a perfume. No, it's seriously, it's no joke. I have a million subscribers. He does. Look on YouTube. Jeremy Fragrance. Jeremy Fragrancia. Well, it's worked. They're going to do it. So, thank you very much. <laughs> so, I, I want to know which perfume is better okay. for men. Green Irish First, versus this Nautic Voyage. Is this better for a man? Sexy or not? Or is, is this better? Oh, it's good. This is good. Oh, it's good. But wait, is this better? Or oh, this is perfect. Or is, is th okay, so this video, uh, it's it's fun, but it's it, it, we don't perhaps need to watch the whole thing uh, because it's it's just it's what used to be a more typical format for him where he gets young ladies to give opinions, and here he was comparing Nautica Voyage to Green Irish Tweed, and they, they really liked both, and he kind of said, well, do you know that one of them's worth 30 or 20 dollars, 
and the other one's like 400. Uh, so that was fine, and but it really was just the amazing outfit and the confidence of the guy that I was interested in there. Here's one that we can get a little bit more out of, and this was his top five niche brands, uh, which he filmed again on the beach. Let's have a look. Hi guys, Jeremy Fragrance here in Miami. Top five favorite niche brands. On the number five, I'm putting Bond number nine and Montal. Okay. Look at the physique though, you've got to hand it to Jeremy. Uh, people might take the mickey out of him and laugh at him and, uh, because he you know, walks around with, with no clothes on. But great physique, fantastic fitness levels there. Um, I've actually got a statue here, kind of a, let's just grab it. I've got a Greek statue, which kind of, uh, these tend to present the ideal male physique of, uh, you know, throughout the ages really. And he's pretty close to that. In fact, he's almost like more muscly in some ways, but he's he's got that really, really slender look. He looks exactly like this guy actually. And, uh, you know, muscly, but not like overly. I, I think it looks bad when guys have got like ridiculously big muscles on their back and their neck and stuff. So, I mean, you have to admire the guy's physique and that does take self-discipline and a lot of you know training and um, consistency so you, your hands are ha heads up hands up, um, hats off that's the word I'm especially I'm looking forward to Jeremy for you know he is in, in tremendous physical shape and uh, you know in a, an enviable physique so why not show it off I think that's what I say Bond number nine is not so good from the fragrances like Montal, but the story is superb. They are honoring New York City, how great New York City is. They got Wall Street, they got Bleecker Street, they got the scent of peace for him after the 9-11 crash. There are so many terrible asshole people on the planet and like they do scent of peace, let's do peace. You know, guys, this is love. We go on to love and sex and power. This is what I like. So, Montal is about. Okay, right. So he picked Bond number nine as one of his is in fifth place, uh, and then he, he highlighted the the scent of peace. Uh, I mean, yeah, I agree with him. The people who did 9/11 are indeed uh, effing assholes. Uh, but he can't. In in contrast, he poses peace, great love, yes, and sex, uh, which is you know. I don't know where that comes into sort of uh, looking forward to peace as opposed to hatred and division, uh, but it, yeah, uh, he's got his own unique way of looking at life, and uh, yeah, I kind of like it, but I'm not sure the way he always puts things is, is the most uh, brilliant way. But you have to remember, Jeremy is, is German, and he's, he's not speaking his first language, but yeah, a, a simple outlook there on the, the issue of international terrorism, which he would replace with love, power, and sex, which... I guess you could, you know, that could work. Here, let's see what else he says. He seems to be using an After 8 Mint as a microphone, by the way. Half of the price and it is better from the fragrance quality and cheaper. So I like it. <laughs> Number four, I'm putting Parfums de Mali. Yes, I love it, but it misses a little bit of a private character, although it's a great niche company. And I know the owners, I even slept at the owner's place in at the general manager's place in New York and New Jersey. All cool, all cool. I love their fragrances. Great brand if you like oriental sweet fragrances. Now this brand is specifically great if you like oriental sweet fragrances. On the number three, Okay, fair enough. Yeah, they are known for that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, that was okay. I mean, he's, he's got a long history of, of quite liking some of their stuff. And I think he was, you know, years back, he was kind of instrumental in breaking them as a big thing on, on YouTube. And, and maybe, I don't know how, how much bigger role he's had in their brand success overall. Uh, but I think they're probably very grateful for his continued mentioning of their stuff on his channel. And uh, of course, a lot of people really like their fragrances. I don't actually own any yet, and maybe because they are known for the sweet oriental stuff, which isn't my favorite kind of thing. Let me know in the comments what you think about Parfums de Mali. Let's see what Jeremy's gonna come up with next. Who's gonna be number three? Putting Crete, and you know why? Because Crete has been sold, so it's not privately held anymore. Secondly, it has never been what I actually thought it is, because when they say, like, I don't know, 200 years old or something, this brand is not with their fragrances that old as far as my research goes because I gotta tell you that what is Crete's oldest fragrance? I think it's something Tuberum or something and how old is it? Like 40 years. So I think there's a bit more marketing behind Crete than we actually know and less actual heritage but generally the storyline from father to son I think is absolutely superstar. Number two most favorite niche brand is... Okay, so he puts Creed at number three, kind of, I think he was saying it's only at number three, not two or one, because it's been sold recently. 
uh, which is interesting. And then he goes on to say he doesn't necessarily believe in some of their claims to have this many hundreds of years of heritage. Uh, but then he says he loves the uh, handed down from father to son thing, but he's just said that it's no longer is no longer handed down to father and son because it's now in private hands. So that doesn't really make any sense, does it? A slightly interesting description of Creed House. Uh, on the one hand, he says he doesn't believe the history, and then he says he loves the father to son thing. Uh, but fair enough. I think it's a great uh, fragrance house, of course. Uh, but yeah, again, some of his uh, justifications and, and descriptions of things are, are somewhat odd, aren't they? But you yeah, know, I, I still, I'm still watching and I'm still in, uh, entertained. Amouash. I'm wearing Amouash right now. I think it's owned by a very wealthy guy in the Oman. And he just said, let's throw everything expensive in this fragrance brand. Let's do the high quality ingredients and great bottles and all that stuff. And they source all of their ingredients from the direct neighborhood on where they are based in. They source all their ingredients from the direct neighborhood on where they are based in. Remember that, good selling point. Did you hear that? I repeat it again. They source all of their ingredients directly from the neighborhood where they are based in. Now that's true niche. That's like Irvin Creed told me, you can check out this video, when a grandma picks up strawberries and makes a jam out of it. That's niche. That's like handmade stuff. I love that idea. Okay, guys, there you have it. The definite, if, uh, many of us debate what's the definition of a niche fragrance. Jeremy, thank God, has summed it up for us. It's like when a grandma picks strawberries and makes jam from them. So that, a, a nice, I, I like that one. He's actually done really well with that way of encapsulating what niche means. Thanks for that, Jeremy. By Amouash. But what's my number one favorite niche brand? It's Roja Dove. I think Roja Dove is the coolest. He used to work for Guerlain and then he switched to making his own brand. And it takes time and strength and passion to sell a fragrance for a thousand dollars. It's, I can just create a fragrance and sell it for fifty thousand dollars. It takes me 20 seconds. I just increase the price. But will you actually buy it? So Roja Dove really has it done down nicely with his luxury appeal. Okay, so Jeremy could produce a very expensive fragrance in 20 seconds. I'm not sure what he means there. I think what he's trying to say is it takes a bit of skill to actually position your brand to be able to charge that kind of money uh, and it doesn't really matter. So in a way he's kind of admitting it doesn't perhaps matter exactly what's gone into the fragrance because they don't take thousands of pounds worth of extra ingredients to make these expensive fragrances uh, but it's all about positioning your brand as a luxury brand which he does have a good point there so I, I think he makes a valid point and of course Roger's done rather well at, at positioning himself as an uber luxe uh, fragrance house so I agree with Jeremy there yep he has a specific aura around him. I feel fantastic, guys. I love God. I love Jesus. I love Christianity. I love Catholicism. I feel so good, my baby. And Roger Dov is my favorite. So, that is it. Also, of course, check out my own brand. That's it from me from Miami Beach. I love you guys. Peace. Wow, okay, brilliant ending there. So he suddenly told us that he feels amazing, which I think he does. I think he's really happy to be out in Miami uh, rather than, than stuck in Cologne and rainy Cologne or whatever. And uh, then, yeah, loves, uh, he brings in the religious stuff again, obviously very important. I'm not gonna t be, be too disrespectful about that. Catholicism, as he, I think he means Catholicism there, but uh, yeah, he, he, he's very keen to mention that in every video, which again, you know, uh, some people may be cynical about that, but it's all part of this intriguing, somewhat contradictory sometimes persona that, that he puts across because some of the things he says uh, about like, um, I don't know, li liking hot chicks and stuff, it, it probably doesn't tie in with what you expect from a devoutly religious person. So all really interesting and intriguing stuff. Uh, loving to see his new uh, videos made out there in Miami uh, and, and, and really intrigued to see what he's gonna do next and where his journey will take him. I always enjoy watching to his videos. I know they're not the same as a really in-depth fragrance review for you niche fragrance connoisseurs out there. But uh, for those of us who take life a little less seriously a lot of the time, it's something that I find quite watchable, quite entertaining, and there's a lesson for us all, positive or, or negative, I think, to be learned from Jeremy Fragrance. Guys, thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project.